This video is sponsored by Gigatech Gaming. So today we'll be going through every single Zompok toe throughout the entire series of Bleach. Extended universe Zompok toe such as Can't Fear Your Own World and Spirits Are Forever With You will be included. Anime filler arc Zompok toes will not be included. Each sword will be ranked on a basis of power, overall versatility, and the amount of other Zanpak toe that outright counter or just override them in general. With all that being said, it's obvious your favorite Zanpak toe may not fall where you want it to. So keep in mind, putting personal bias aside, this was the most fair and honest ranking that could have possibly been done. All reasons for where certain swords will be ranked and why are thoroughly explained. So without further ado, do all disclaimers and introductions aside let's just get right into this thank you for watching leave a like if you enjoy and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this but first, have you ever thought about building a monster gaming PC that gives you the most up-to-date graphics and greatest performance, and then halfway through realize you have no idea how to build one and completely give up? Me too. But now, there's Gigatech Gaming, an awesome company that will build your brand new PC for you with fully customizable parts, 24-7 tech support, as well as full stress testing and driver pre-installing. So that way, when you get your PC shipped with the ultra-fast two to three day shipping by the way. It's a small, super easy setup before you're ready to get gaming with premium components. Gigatech Gaming's products are competitively priced, built by industry pros, and offer complete transparency with their product, as well as a free 30-day return policy. With a build fee costing only $99, if you want that awesome next-gen gaming experience but have absolutely no idea where to start, check the link in the description and see what awesome solutions Gigatech Gaming offers you for your problems. Thanks to Gigatech tech for sponsoring and back to the video so right off the bat there are about five zanpak toe that although are named shown on screen or in a panel and may even be given a release command do absolutely nothing at all due to the shinigami being eviscerated on site or just completely negated these five zanpak toe are with no particular order hozan Katakage, Shunjin, Magari Bue, and Kenpika. And these all fall in our great category of embarrassing entries. Moving on to the actual list. Itegumo is a Sane Kotetsu Zanpakuto. Used only once, its Shikai command is run and turns the blade into some form of tri-sword. Its actual Shikai ability is unknown, unclear whether it even actually has one or not, but it was clearly enough to get Asane to captain level after Unahana Retsu's passing, so we can at least keep it out of the embarrassing entries. Right guys? Shinkin Hakyoken is the sacred ceremonial blade passed down by the Issei family and is technically the now Issei Zanpakuto. The sword's one and only purpose is to disperse the power of a god. Conveniently, the one thing Kyoraku needed to defeat Lil Baro. Although defeating one of the strongest Sternritter while in its holy form, it is ultimately a bladeless ritual tool and other than the exact situation it was used in, has no real utility. The sword was sealed within Kyoraku's Zanpakuto Hisagomaru is the Zanpak Toe of Hanataro Yamada. Being a member of the 4th Division, the Zanpak Toe mostly revolves around healing. Upon contact, Hisagomaru causes friend or foe to regenerate, as red smoke emits from any healing injuries. A gauge of sorts is lined along the length of the blade, and once full, enables Hanataro use of his Shikai ability. Named Shuiro Hisagomaru, released by the command Fulfill, it shrinks the Zanpak Toe into a scalpel, which, although deceiving tiny is capable of unleashing a massive energy blast comparable to a hollow Cero in attack power. This blast is generated using all of the pain it has absorbed from healing. It remains an unreliable and terrible choice in battle-like settings, despite its power, which results in its drastically low ranking. The Zanpakuto of 2nd Division Lieutenant Marichio Omaida. Gigetsu Bori's release command is Crush. When in Shikai form, the blade shapeshifts into an oversized spike ball with a long chain at the end. But just like its wielder Omaida, it's really only worth as far as you can throw him. But is at least one of the first Zanpakuto on the list with some kind of utility in battle besides just being a sword? 
the Zanpak Toe of Hiyori Sarugaki. The sword, upon hearing its release command, chop cleanly, transforms into a giant serrated cleaver. With no special abilities to note, it doesn't even look that cool to be honest, but could probably chop a giant spike ball in half. The Zanpakuto of Squad 5 Vice Captain Momo Hinamori. When given the release command, snap. The blade grows a light red handle with a five petal flower design being stamped on her suba. Being a fire based Zanpakuto, Toby Yume releases fireballs that explode on impact. An ability that almost any other Shinigami can replicate with a simple keto technique. It does seem like the Zanpakuto is capable of growing stronger, as after Aizen's defeat, the sword has since grown a third prong, but it's unknown if this actually means means anything. A Zanpak toe crafted by the creator of the entire Aosachi method itself, Oetsu Namaya. Sayafushi was deemed a failed creation, although being said to never chip or scratch from usage. The blade is supposedly too sharp and having too smooth of an edge, according to Oetsu. Because of this, the sword can never be sheathed. Despite all of the self-deprecation, the sword was able to take out the entire Schutzstaffel, the elite guard of the Quincy King. You know, before the thing, it is not known whether it has a Shikai or a Bankai. Because of this, its overall strength is entirely dependent on the wielder itself, which is what causes it to fall entirely in such a low category of rank. However, its resume compared to the swords below it definitely need to be acknowledged. Jirobo and Kanzaka Zanpakuto. As fourth seat of the seventh division, Sunza Kigarasu Shikai converts the sword into a myriad of spiraling pinwheel blades. Released by the command, flap away. Jirobo can control each of these spinning wheels with his mind, all moving faster than the human eye. These pinwheels are also in unlimited supply, as Jirobo is capable of recreating them by resheathing and drawing his blade. These blades can unfortunately be easily destroyed by enemy projectiles such as Soul Society Uryu's Holy Arrows, making this a great concept on paper, but in practice, not as practical as it sounds. Haguro Tambo is the Zanpak Toe of the etchy loving and possibly producing captain of the 8th division Lisa Yadomaru. With the Shikai command smash, the sword is merged with its sheath and transformed into a long pole arm fitted with an exceptional blade at one end and a heavy ball at the other. The shape of the weapon allows it to be wielded like an axe, while the weighted side can be used to crush or slam into opponents. The Zanpak Toe's Bankai is unknown, which seeing the kind of media this woman consumes on an almost constant and basis, the inner machinations of such a mind should perhaps stay hidden. Its Shikai transformation does at least give it a versatility in battle not yet seen so far. Wabisuke is owned by Lieutenant of the 3rd Division Izuru Kira. With the release command, raise your head, Wabisuke loses its curve and straightens out where the average katana should end, forming the shape of a hook with a cutting edge on the inside. The sword Shikai is meant to depict the role of an executioner. The Zanpakuto's main ability doubles the weight of anything it touches. For example, upon contact with the blade, an opponent that weighs 10 pounds would increase to 20, metaphysically at least. After enough strikes, an enemy enemy will become completely immobile, unable to even lift their bodies from the floor. It makes the victims almost seem like they're falling to their knees and begging for forgiveness. And this is where Wabisuke's shape fulfills its ultimate purpose. The user can then slip the blade under an opponent's throat, decapitating them under the massive weight of their actions. In the most recent chapter for the Hell Arc, Kira is also shown to be able to double the weight of his own body parts in order to crush enemies under the weight of his limbs. Although purely melee based, its utility in close quarters combat can't be denied. Everyone's favorite replacement Shinigami for Karakura Town, Suchi Namazu, is Zenosuke Kurumadani Zanpakuto. When released with the command, Good morning, Suchi Namazu takes the shape of a wind and fire wheel. When slammed into the ground, the Zanpakuto is able to create a fissure in a significant portion of the earth, then using all the projected debris as spikes that impale enemies. Suchi Namazu has also been depicted manipulating the debris in order to create a cage of land that traps an opponent within. Possessed by the visored Love Aikawa. When using the command Crush Down, Tengumaru becomes a massive black Kanabo, a metal club grafted with spikes on all sides. Besides its giant size and attack power, the Zanpakuto Shikai is also able to manipulate fire to a small extent. Its Bankai has yet to be revealed though, which means it sits down here with the other rejects.
Neji Bana is the late Kayan Shiba's Zanpakuto, only shown once being used from Kayan's memory by Espada No. 9, Aronero Arurure. Neji Bana, when released into Shikai by the command Surge, Water, and Heaven, becomes an elongated spear shaped like a trident. The end of the weapon spirals off into a corkscrew-like shape and has water flowing freely out of both ends. The Zanpakuto's release revolves completely around the manipulation of water, its strength compared to being hit with the force of a crashing wave. It has much utility as a powerful elemental Zanpakuto, but without any additional abilities and the lack of a Bankai, its achievements in the grand scheme of the series remain pretty low. The quote-unquote Zanpakuto of Yachiru Kusajishi, which seems to not have any release command whatsoever. Sanpo Kenju, when in Shikai form, manifests two hostile creatures that fight alongside Yachiru. When Yachiru attacks, the two creatures mimic her movements. The small creature attacking just before the actual hit, and the larger one striking directly after. This tactic makes it extremely difficult to dodge the user's moves. And the massive damage that Zanpakuto is capable of also creates deep fissures to be carved into the ground. Its utility makes it a much more viable option for battle than most other entries before. Wielded by the captain of the 13th Division, Jushiro Ukitake, Sogyo no Kotowari, is one of the very rare dual blade Zanpakuto that exists in Soul Society. Released with the command, All ye waves become my shield, all ye thunder become my blade. Ukitake takes his blade in both hands and splits it in two. The two swords are then connected by a red rope at the base of the hilts. The Shikai's ability absorbs any incoming attack with its left sword and then transfers that energy through the rope that binds the two swords. Ampl him the attack in both power and speed as it passes through each of the five charms aligned on the rope. All that energy is then fired back out of the right blade at full force. At such a rate, it is not only hard to dodge, but as if the attack itself is from the Zanpak Toe, which serves to confuse opponents on what the Shikai's ability actually is. In video games, Ukitake is shown being able to wield the elements of both water and lightning with his Zanpak Toe. I can only assume these were liberties taken by the game developer based off of Ukitake's actual verbal release command, as he is never shown to do any of these attacks in the canonical series. Because Sogyo no Kotowari's main power isn't revealed until late in the series, but its Shikai and appearance is, when building a fighting game character, they took waves and thunder literally it seems. Zanpakuto, a vice captain of the 11th division, Ikaku Madurame, released with the command Grow, like Lisa Yadomaru. Hozuki Maru's full release is achieved with the fusion of Ikaku's katana and its sheath, elongating like a spear. Hozuki Maru's Shikai resembles a Japanese Kikuchi Yari. What separates Hozuki Maru from other simple weapon changing Zanpakuto is its secondary command, Split Apart, which breaks Hozuki Maru into its true form, a three section staff. While in this shape, the chains extend at a decent length, allowing for long-range attacks and much more flexibility in combat. Its major distinguishing feature that pushes it higher up on the list is the fact that Ikaku has actually evolved Hozuki Maru into its Bankai state, Ryoman Hozuki Maru. In Bankai, the Zanpakuto now takes the shape of a huge cylindrical weight held up on Ikaku's shoulders, chained up to the two main blades, one resembling a Chinese monk's spade and a Guan Dao for the other. Unlike other Bankai, Bankai, Ryoman Hozuki Maru starts off slow and does not gain its full power until dragging the fight out for a considerable length of time, enough to fill up the dragon crest on its back with Ryatsu. Despite being a strong and durable weapon, a step above most lieutenants, Hozuki Maru falls short in competitive play due to its slow start ability. Hainako is the Zanpakuto of 10th Division Vice Captain Rangiku Matsumoto. With the release command of Growl, Hainako disperses into a cloud of ash that is capable of completely surrounding a horde of opponents. Anywhere her ash has landed, Rangiku is able to cut, as if her sword was present everywhere all at once. Similar to the much higher ranked Zanpakuto, Senbon Zakura, Rangiku is able to control where the small ash blades move, ultimately planning to envelop and tear her enemy to shreds. Reds. The attack strength of Hainako cuts depending on how much Ash is in contact with the opponent. Just as much of an offensive Zanpakuto as it is a defensive, with Rangiku still attempting to learn her Bankai, it keeps this potential powerhouse down in the ranks for now. 
Ichigo's dad, Ishin Shiba Zanpakuto, and Getsu is released with the command Burn. Very original. Although the blade remains unchanged, flames become cloaked around it and begin streaming off of the sword. Despite simple flame manipulation, it seems the Zanpakuto is also capable of converting Ishin's own blood into attack power. Shown transforming Ishin's blood that was spit onto the blade into a large energy blast that slams into the opponent. The sword can also gather a massive amount of spiritual energy and unleash it in one large shockwave, a technique known as the Getsuga Tensho. However, despite that one similarity with Zangetsu, it would seem the Bankai is completely different, as although we never see it, it's mentioned by both Aizen Sosuke and Ishin himself that heavy injuries prevent him from properly using the Bankai, meaning he can never activate it in a critical moment, which, frankly, really keeps the Zanpakuto down. The Zanpakuto of former 7th Division Captain Sajin Komomura, released with the command Roar. The blade remains unchanged when in Shikai. Instead, Tenkin can create different phantom body parts of an armored giant spirit. When slashing the sword, these disembodied limbs will follow the motions. Clearly, much larger and more powerful than any Shinigami, the phantom can inflict a much larger amount of damage than the user themselves. Tenkin's Bankai is merely the full realization of the Zanpakuto Shikai release. Named Kokujo Tengen Myo, the Bankai summons the entire spirit, enormous and clad in armor, around 100 meters tall and looking just like a samurai. The attack power compared to Tenken Shikai is vastly amplified and increased, as well as fast enough to accurately mimic all of the user's movement to a T, regardless of their size difference. Kokujo Tengen Myo's downside is the powerful bond that is shared between its user and and the spirit. Any pain or harm that is inflicted onto the Bankai is transferred over to the user, which means it inversely opens a massive vulnerability in the user's defenses. This is mostly what keeps it below other Zanpakuto's, despite its attack potential. Thanks to Sajin Komamura's humanization, a process used by the werewolf clan that allows the beast to cast aside their heart in exchange for immortality, as long as Komamura is human, he is but a shell, incapable of dying. This feature of invulnerability also transfers over to his Bankai, known now as Kokujo Tengen Myo Dangai Jo. This new mode causes the giant to shed its armor, revealing the demonic appearance underneath. The giant is composed of nothing but pure reishi, completely invulnerable to any and all attacks. While removing the major weak point of Komamura's Bankai entirely, instead, humanization just makes you a dog for the rest of your life. At least he... Wounded Bambietta just for someone else to end up taking her out? Huh. Zabimaru is the Zanpakuto of 6th Division Vice Captain Renji Abarai. After the command HAL, the blade transforms into a 6-piece segmented blade, capable of multiplying almost without limit, allowing for long-range extension, making Zabimaru's utility more like a whip rather than an actual sword. When the segments of the blade are broken or detached from the hilt, Renji has used the ability Higa Zeko, which allows him to manipulate the disconnected pieces and attack an opponent in a final desperate inspiration move from all directions. In the case of Zabimaru's Bankai, it actually has two separate forms. Zabimaru's initial false Bankai that Renji starts out with is known as Hihiro Zabimaru. When first calling out to his Zanpakuto spirit, Zabimaru did not respect or recognize Renji's strength. Imagine that. In this fake Bankai, Renji's Zanpakuto increases in size and manifests into a skeletal snake-like form. Hihiro Zabimaru consists of many more more segments, all now held together by Renji's Ryatsu, which encourages much more fluid movement. The large snake head at the end is its focal attack point. It can also fire a dense blast of concentrated Reishi from its mouth. This is, for all intents and purposes, a more evolved version of his Shikai though. Once Renji meets Ichibe Hyosube during the Thousand Year Blood War and discovers his Bankai's true name, Renji proves himself to Zabimaru, who allows him to wield the final release, Bankai. So, oh, 
Zabimaro. Like the original Bankai, Renji is cloaked in jungle garb with a gauntlet on his right hand that resembles a snake skull. A spinal cord looking tail is also wrapped around Renji's waist. The Zanpakuto's blade can be extended from the snake gauntlet's mouth at will. In this new form, Renji gains new abilities such as Hihio. The monkey garb becomes a large skeletal arm that can extend and cause considerable damage with its massive strength. The tail wrapped around his waist can also stretch out, causing the blade to become more serrated with the technique Orochio, and as a finisher, the attack Zaga Teppo, where after Renji impales an opponent, a giant jaw of spiritual energy forms behind him and the opponent before snapping down and crushing the enemy. This technique is powerful enough to reduce a target to ashes. Originally a very low entry, Zabimaru's true Bankai is undeniably capable of immense power and presents the user a myriad of opportunities to win against an opponent compared to the false Bankai. Although, compared to other Zanpakuto on this list, there are others that massively outweigh it in durability, power, versatility, Ruri Iro Kujaku is the Zanpakuto of 11th Division 3rd seat Yumichika Ayasigawa, with a Zanpakuto spirit built truly to match the owner. The vain personality traits of both wielder and sword keep Ruri Iro Kujaku from achieving its full potential due to Yumichika refusing to call it by its proper name. Insultingly called Fuji Kujaku and released with the command Bloom, the false Shikai takes the form of a sickle shaped blade. It is only once the third Third seat officer swallows his pride and properly announces his Zanpakuto correctly as Ruri Iro Kujaku with the Shikai command split and deviate unleashes its true power. Fully released, the sword transforms into a myriad of glowing peacock feather-like tentacles, seeking to pursue and ensnare the opponent. Once trapped, they absorb all trace of Ryatsu from any victims. The stolen energy then becomes small buds that when fully grown are able to seriously incapacitate or or completely eliminate the opponent. On the flip side, allies are also able to use these buds to heal and recover in relation to the amount of Ryatsu that was absorbed. Yumichika keeps his Zanpakuto's main ability a secret due to it being keto based and wanting to stay in the no keto allowed 11th division. Except, unlike Ikaku, it's actually a scary threat to be hit with, especially when you're least expecting it from such a fodder character. <laughs> The Zanpakuto of Captain of the Stealth Force and 2nd Division, Soy Fong, Suzume Bachi, upon being released with Sting All Enemies to Death, glows white and shrinks down to form a black and gold gauntlet. Similar to an assassin's weapon, a permanent stinger-like blade is fitted onto the user's middle finger, meant to resemble a hornet. Although small, Suzume Bachi still has a great utility as a melee weapon. The Shikai's main power revolves around its death in two steps ability. Upon one single stab of Suzume Bachi, the victim is branded with a black flower crest where the wound is located. Becoming the target of Soi Fong's next attack, if struck a second time, the venom released by Suzume Bachi's puncture wounds will inevitably unalive the victim, eradicating their body from the inside out. The time frame of which varies depending on the overall Ryatsu difference between the opponent and the wielder. Suzume Bachi's Bankai is named Jakuho Raikobin. The Zanpakuto now grows to a size that completely envelops Soi Fong's arm, taking the appearance of a gold armored missile launcher. When first used against Baragon, Soi Fong wrapped a heavy metal sash around the building she stood on to reduce the recoil. Preferring not to use her Bankai due to it being a disgrace as her status as a covert ops agent, when fully locked onto its target, Jakuho Raikobin releases a large missile that tracks the enemy before erupting in a massive explosion after it strikes. The strength of the blast was strong enough to crack the Shiju no Saimo, a barrier keto formed from four other powerful barrier keto produced by Hachijen Ushoda, as well as heavily injure both Hollow King Baragon Luzenbarn and Sternritter K BG9. While Suzume Bachi's Shikai is pretty much guaranteed victory, if dealing with an agile enough opponent, the second strike can be hard to pin down. The Bankai is also cumbersome and needs specific preparation to be used efficiently. This keeps the special entry where it is on the list, literally the meme of the horse drawn picture in my opinion. <laughs> 
the Zanpak Tell of First Division Vice Captain Sasakibe Chojuro. Ganryo Maru Shikai ability is unfortunately unknown, although it is released with the command Pierce. It is assumed the Zanpak Tell's first release would be a lesser or weaker version of the Bankai. Besides being immediately dunked on by Ichigo when first shown, its Bankai is much more memorable and terrifying. Koko Ganryo Riku, the Zanpak Tell's Bankai, was strong enough to scar Captain Commander Shigekuni Yamamoto's forehead. Raising the sword above his head, dark clouds form above the user as the weather bends to their will, spreading into a dome of lightning that begin to create pillars around him. We see through use from Driscoll Birchy, the weather can be used to shoot lightning bolts from the clouds directly onto your enemies. But when properly well, Chojuro is able to gesture the lightning pillars with his blade and infuse his sword with the lightning. This specific form of usage was responsible for injuring Yamamoto. Now, Suzumushi is an interesting one. Originally the Zanpakuto of a woman known only as Kakyo. Kakyo was a Shinigami and longtime close friend of Kaname Tosin. After being Minecraft PvP'd by her husband at her funeral, Kaname swore vengeance on Soul Society and took on her Zanpakuto. Despite looking like an average katana, the main focal point of interest and what's responsible for Suzumushi's power is the ring laid upon its Suba. Perhaps having something to do with the the Alsachi being imprinted upon by two souls, the Zanpakuto has two Shikai releases. The first being released with the command Cry, projecting a high-pitched tone over the area that overloads the eardrums of anyone present, causing them to fall unconscious. The tone can also be used to vibrate the blade itself, shown when Tosin uses this to free his sword from Kazashini's chains. The second release, known as Suzumushi Nishiki Benihiko, uses the same vibration to increase the speed of the blade, so much so that it begins to leave behind after images. These after images become full replicas of Suzumushi's blade, which then rain down on the opponent. Once again, a special case, the Zanpakuto Suzumushi not only has a Bankai, but a Resurrection as well. Due to Kaname Tosin's far gone holification, the Zanpakuto's Bankai, Suzumushi Sushiki Enma Kurogi, begins with the ring on the sword Suba starting to spin before growing in size. The the cyclone gets faster and faster until splitting off into nine circles, surrounding the entire perimeter. Once in place, the rings spread a black void that envelops everything within, dulling the senses of sight, sound, and sensing for spiritual pressure for anything caught within except those in contact with Suzumushi's hilt. Known as Mumio, or no light, the Zanpakuto remains in a sword state to allow Kaname full reign while within the void, giving the user control of the momentum of the the fight. Its major downfall is Suzumushi's inability to differentiate friend from foe. Any person who takes hold of the hilt can regain their senses. This dome exists until either dismissed by the user or if they become incapacitated. Suzumushi's Resurrection, Suzumushi Yakushiki Grillar Grillo, instead completely submerges Tosin in the void of darkness, molding him into a disgusting monster that resembles an insect beast chimera. Covered entirely in black fur and even presented with a hollow hole, the cricket-like head is home to two bulbous eyes that upon being opened grant Tosin the gift of sight. Now with the ability to see, fully released holified Tosin is given amplified strength and regeneration powers. Able to compete with the likes of Kokujo Tengen Myo with his bare hands, the Resurrection does also retain some level of sound-based control as well. His ability, Los Nueve Aspectos, creates lime green Green rings that reverberate out with concussive force and dominate the opponent with critical injuries. Kazeshini is the Zanpak Toe of 9th Division Lieutenant Shuhei Hisagi. Released with the Shikai Ri, the sword takes the form of two scythe like weapons connected to a spiked rod, both tethered together by the chain, which is the actual manifestation of the Zanpak Toe itself. With the chain capable of extending, the blades can be swung in large circles and cause long distance damage. Kazeshini can also be used to immobilize an enemy's weapon or body entirely. Despite hating the shape of a Shikai, 
Sakai, Asagi is an expert at wielding them and using them in unpredictable ways. In Can't Fear Your Own World, the extended Bleach light novel, Kaze Shinny's true abilities are uncovered, revealed to actually be a dual-type Zanpakuto similar to Sogyo no Kotawari or Katen Kyokotsu, the chain of Kaze Shinny is supposedly able to restore any injury that Hasagi acquires, to the point even if his body is dismembered, his body can be linked back together as long as Hasagi has sufficient Ryatsu to perform the action. Kaze Shinny is also shown to have achieved a complete Bankai state as well, named Fushi no Kojo. When fully released, the chains of Kaze Shinny become a noose that ties around the user's throat, connected to a larger black orb of chains that appears above them. The chains of Kaze Shinny then become indestructible, constantly regenerating even if they are damaged. All spiritual pressure inside Fushi no Kojo's realm stagnates and halts, said to simulate the original state of time from the past millions of years ago. The Bankai extends Kaze Shinny's healing factor to any opponent Hisage chooses, and in return, links their Ryatsu and, by proxy, their lifespans. Similar to a destiny bond, in exchange for the life support, each participant is continually drained of Ryatsu until they both either give out and pass on, or an outside force interferes. This essentially results in a deadlock that equalizes the battlefield between the two players within Fushi no Kojo, eliminating any power gaps and allowing the user to fight foes much stronger than them on more even ground. Once a low-level simplified Zanpakuto, thanks to the extended universe, Kaze Shinny jumps up to a much higher ranking than the original Bleach series would have lended to it. The captain of the 5th division, Hiroko Shinji Zanpakuto. Through the release of Command Collapse, Sakanade Shikai transforms the pommel of the blade into a large ring that allows the Zanpakuto to rotate in the air around Shinji's hand. With no need to grip the blade, the movement reflects the Shikai's power. Its special ability, the inverted world, uses a pink mist that releases as the sword is spun to cause subjects to fall prey to the sword's optical illusion. When induced into the the hallucination, an opponent's sense of direction is entirely reversed. Up becomes down, left becomes right, and vice versa. It doesn't stop there either, as eyesight, injury locations, and even attack direction are completely inverted. Shinji can even reverse the words he speaks. The more experienced or hardened an opponent, ironically, the more effective the hypnosis, as despite being fully aware of the technique, even attempting to work under the conditions will cause ingrained reflexes to make mistakes mistakes. As just a matter of fact, the mixed up senses will over time cause nausea, further confusion, and disorientation. This ability can mark or ignore people based on Shinji's will, making it a great asset in group fights. In Bleach's extended universe, Sakanade's Bankai is shown to be Sakashima Yokushima Hapo Fusagari. Sakanade transforms into a long staff with a circle now at the top end of the Zanpakuto. A large flower blooms underneath Shinji, to the point it completely encapsulates him and shields him from the events to come. The sensation of the Bankai now targets every everyone in the vicinity indiscriminately, confusing anyone in range and reversing the roles of friend and foe. Anyone who is an enemy becomes a friend, and anyone who is a friend becomes an enemy, creating a situation of all-out carnage between all who are brought into the mass hysteria. Shinji being the lone party that is unaffected while safe inside this flower dome, this Bankai is truly only usable when there are no allies around. <laughs> Visored Captain of the 9th Division Kensei Mugaruma's Zanpakuto. Released with the command Blow It Away, the air current itself bends beneath Tachikaze's power as the sword manifests into a combat knife with a small ring on the blunt side guard. By slashing at the air, the Zanpakuto releases a myriad of wind blades that are able to cut into opponents. But the real damage comes from Tachikaze's ability to make these cuts explode and further harm enemies. Shown to easily cut apart a giant hollow. These explosions and energy can also be charged. Unleash is a gigantic Rarioku blast that also packs quite a punch. Upon release of the Bankai, Tekken Tachikaze, the wind increasingly powers up and decimates the area around the user. Revealing the Zanpakuto has now shaped into large knuckle blades and further spread over the user's arms and shoulders like armor. This final release focuses all of the Shikai's initial attack power into the user's 
Master's knuckles, which are able to be switched out from blades to gauntlets or brass knuckles depending on the situation. When struck by Tekken Tachikaze, Kensei's punches are as powerful as an immense explosion. And for as long as the Zanpak Toe is making contact with that opponent, that explosive damage is felt by the opponent continuously, never ending. Its area of effect attacks are exceedingly dangerous and can cause devastation without need for control or direction. While the Bankai does condense this down to melee only, its overall utility and ability to flat out ignore other abilities due to this damage as a Zanpak Toe in general is not lost. <laughs> beginning to reach much more notable Zanpak Toe from the series. Senbon Zakura is the Zanpak Toe of Division 6 Captain Byaku Yakuchi, released with the command Scatter. In Shikai, the blade of Senbon Zakura divides into 1,000 tiny fragments that drift off from the hilt. While normally too small to be seen, the light reflected off the myriad of blade slivers create the illusion of a storm of cherry blossoms. These petals are capable of shredding an opponent from any distance, and are powerful enough in number to break almost any defense. Vice versa, they are also durable enough to gather up as a shield and withstand plenty of attacks. In order to keep the user safe, Byakuya has instilled what is called a hurtless area that does not allow any of his petals to enter within 85 centimeters of him unless he himself wills them. When released into Bankai, Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi, the sword is released from Byakuya's grip, dropped straight down into the ground as it phases through the floor like wool. In one of the most iconic scenes in any manga, two rows of giant blades sprout from the ground as the air around the area becomes sinister and dark. Thousands of blades scatter into a countless amount of fragments, making it near impossible to dodge or even see the movements of any of them. Now able to manipulate the Blossom Storm with his hands for extra speed, or if the user so wishes, their mind alone, the amount of options presented to the user thanks to the countless blades are immeasurable. Simultaneously able to defend and attack now, multiple opponents can be eliminated at once by the torrent of razors. And this is only the beginning of Senbon Zakura's devastating Bankai. This Bankai also has a number of forms it can take as well. One of these forms is Senke, also known as the true form of Senbon Zakura Kageyoshi. This technique unites all of the scattered petals from the sword and fuses them to create thousands of glowing pink swords that encircle the user and the opponent in four rows that float above one another. Abandoning defense in favor of close quarters offense, the swords can be individually summoned to the user to be wielded for melee or more fearsomely used in their entirety to devastate an enemy. Senbon Zakura can create these glowing blades without summoning Senke, but the attack power is not as focused. Byakuya can also choose to unite his cherry blossoms even further, calling each and every one of the fragments together into a single powerful sword that Byakuya wields himself. Known as Shuke Hakutaken, because of the bright white appearance, the spiritual pressure released from this focused attack is made to end an opponent in one slash. Despite being one of the most destructive swords on this list so far, Senbon Zakura nearly marks the beginning of the S-Class Zanpak Toes in Soul Society, and is in no way meant to be disrespected by ending up here on the ranking. It just has so much competition. <laughs> Ikomiki Domo, introduced into Can't Fear Your Own World, was the name of an Ajukas class hollow sealed within an Aosachi by Oetsu Namaya. At some point in the past, this hollow rivaled even Baragon Luzenbar, responsible for defeating a younger Genrusai Yamamoto before being erased by a Ichibe Hyosube. During the Thousand Year Blood War, Ikomiki Domo is stolen and gifted to Hikone Ubuginu. Due to being a unique circumstance of existence, the Zanpakuto has multiple different these commands that draw out different amounts of power. These first forms are meant to resemble Shikai's. Its first command, Orbit the Stars, transforms the blade into a massive hollow arm that can attack its foes of its own initiative. Known for being quite a prideful, arrogant hollow, its personality takes shape in its second release, Jot Down Their Funeral. Ikomiki Domo transforms into a gargantuan hollow comparable to the size of resurrected Yami Largo or Gillian generating Huler. In this 
release state, Iko Mickey Domo is powerful enough to take on a group of Fullbringer, Quincy, and Arankar on its own, while its wielder rides atop its head. Its roars can cause the ground to quake and tremble. While in its second release state, the transformed Zanpakuto can also spawn strong underling hollows to ally with itself in combat, each said to be equal to an Ajukas class hollow in power. Its third and final Shikai command, known as Hatch Out and Be Ruin, once again manifests the Zanpakuto into a hollow form. This time, it appears more humanoid in shape, although still being about the size of a house. The aura that radiates from this form gives off a power even greater than a Vasto Lorde, supposedly sharing the benefits of all three Menos class hollows while also exceedingly outclassing each level of them. Ikomiki Domo can generate enough Ryatsu to blast away three Espada and critically injure them despite the attack being blocked. The closest thing this Zanpakuto has to a Bankai is its final release that is called out by announcing Ikomiki Domo's full name. Ikomiki Domo Horaku Hake. When declared, the hollow form of the blade disintegrates, becoming a white gust of wind that surrounds the user. As the white Ryatsu merges with the wielder, a large pale sword is manifested for the newly hollified fusion between the user and Ikomiki Domo. This skyrockets the power of the merged entities, maximizing both their potentials. However, Ikomiki Domo's selfish nature keeps it from remaining subservient to its user, taking the very first chance Hakone's spiritual pressure weakened to try and turn on them and take control. Once its true colors showed, it was whisked back into slumber by Kenpachi Zaraki's Nozarashi in one fatal swing, its final and newest name being Wimp. <laughs> giving off a sinister vibe even in base form because of its smaller Wazakashi shape. Shinzo matches its wielder well as the Zanpakuto of former 3rd Division Captain Ichimaru Gin released with the phrase shoot to kill. Shinzo extends forward at extreme speeds to pierce any and all opponents in its user's way. Said to reach a maximum length of 100 sword lengths, the tremendous force that Shinzo brings with its stabs are enough to push both a blocking Kurosaki Ichigo and giant Jidambo a far distance away or crack Hainako's ash when being used to shield Rangiku. While elongated, the blade can also be used in a swinging motion, the long sword bending to attack in wide arcs that can eliminate multiple targets quickly. Where the Zanpakuto truly becomes dangerous is when it's released into Bankai, named Kamishini no Yari. Although the blade does not change in shape, a myriad of new possibilities are opened for its user. Initially feigned, only amp the extension of Shinzo Shikai, it is still a fact that the blade's attack power, length, and speed are increased. An entire cityscape is able to be swiftly sliced and leveled in a single slash from quite a distance away. Gin claims that his Bankai is at first the longest Zanpakuto, capable of extending up to 8.1 miles. Revealed to be a lie, Kamashini no Yari is then claimed to be the fastest Zanpakuto, said to reach speeds 500 times faster than sound. It it's shown stretching to its full length and retracting by the time Gin can finish clapping his hands. Despite being yet another deception, it does not change the fact that Shinzo's Bankai is highly dangerous and destructive regardless of whatever its true speed and length might be. A terrifying display of this is the technique Buto, where Shinzo is placed square center on the chest pointed at the opponent. It then extends at such a speed the incoming stab is indecipherable by the enemy. This is then one up with the technique Buto Renjin, where instead of one strike, multiple are thrown towards the victim, and what are so fast, they may seem like simultaneous impalements. Kamashini no Yari's true power is its ability to turn to dust for one second while it is expanding and contracting. Located inside that dust is a deadly poison that dissolves and breaks down cells that can be triggered to activate on call. The user can leave a sliver of their blade inside a puncture wound that starts a decomposition process whenever the user chooses. Uses. Given the final command, Kurosu, the victim injected with dust will scatter away into pieces. Although a terrifying Zanpakuto for anyone that doesn't have the speed to match, it is made significantly more dangerous by its user Gin Ichimaru's personality and his psychological tactics to deceive and play the enemy into his hands. Unfortunately, we can't rank it based on that, and when compared to some of the scarier Zanpakuto on this list, it does fall a bit short in the metaphysical department. 
regarded as one of the most beautiful Zanpakuto in Soul Society. Sode no Shirayuki is the sword of one of the series' main protagonists, Rukia Kuchiki, released with the Shikai command Dance. When held out in front of Rukia, the entire blade and hilt turn pale white. A white ribbon also emerges from the pommel as a cold breeze oscillates through the area. In ice-based Zanpakuto, most of Sode no Shirayuki's abilities are labeled as dances by the user Rukia. Its main power doesn't exactly revolve around ice manipulation per se, as it is more so based on freezing the opponent. Most of the Zanpakuto's dances, such examples being Sugi no Mai, Hakuren, or Somei no Mai, Tsukishiro, involve creating a specific area of effect for the attack and flash freezing the entire place to stop victims in their tracks. Upon being incapacitated, the opponents are then shattered to pieces with the ice they are trapped inside. Rukia has also been shown to augment her sword's length with ice, using the ability San no Mai Shirafune to either attack an opponent when at an inconvenient length from them, or create a rope-like extension that allows her to keep in contact with and use her Zapakto's ability from a distance. Sore no Shirayuki has also been shown capable of freezing objects composed entirely of reishi. This coldness does not spread from the blade, however, as its actual ability is to bring the body temperature of its wielder to below freezing. This means all of that power actually stems from the user's body itself. The Zanpakuto is merely just an extension of this ability. The ability to lower the user's body temperature can be utilized to the extreme, effectively bringing the user to a stage of cryo stasis, and preventing any foreign material or substance from entering or affecting the body. The Zanpakuto, as a side effect, regularly causes the ground beneath the user to freeze instantly, creating ice quakes. Rukia is shown to be able to maximize her Shikai and drop her body temperature to absolute zero, fully realizing her Zanpakuto's flash freeze power, although she can only maintain this zero status for no more than four seconds. When released into Bankai, Haka no Togame, Rukia's entire appearance is dramatically altered, becoming draped in an all-white kimono and her hair being chilled to match the pale look of her new outfit, much like the transparent ice that her Zanpakuto has become. Sode no Shirayuki once again is able to drop the user's body temperature to absolute zero, but now Haka no Togame is able to drastically increase the area of influence, acting more like a final desperation move than a transformation or power-up. When activated, a pillar of mist rises and swallows a huge distance of space around the user. Anything caught within this diamond dust is instantly frozen, crumbling only moments after. Even in the aftermath of the release, the act of contact with Rukia's body itself will freeze someone solid until she's regained warmth. The Thousand Year Blood War level up for Rukia just massively ups Soda no Shirayuki stocks. <laughs> My personal favorite Zanpakuto, Ashisogi Jizo is the sword of 12th Division Captain and Head of the Research and Development Team, Kurotsuchi Mayori. A notable mention about the sealed Zanpakuto, besides hey, the suspect way he keeps it on his person, is the fact Mayori has installed a sensor within the blade that forces it to automatically block any incoming sword attacks that come within two feet of his body at an angle of 60 degrees or greater. Released with the command RIP, Ashisogi Jizo transforms into a deformed trident shape with curved serpentine blades at the top. The baby's mouth releases a poisonous vapor that can cause toxins to enter the enemy, but the most direct way is from a stab wound from the Zanpak toe. Working similar to a spider bite, regardless of where the opponent is penetrated, the poison is able to sever the brain signals that control neural impulses for body movement. Although unlike regular paralysis, the victim's pain receptors are very much functional, allowing the user to torture the enemy. Ashisogi Jizo can also cause regular paralysis through an open mouth scream that affects anyone who hears it for four seconds. What does make the Zanpakuto very horrifying, and also why it's so high up on this ranking, is its Bankai, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo. As the baby head on the Zanpakuto guard opens its mouth, a giant caterpillar-like creature emerges in a red cape with golden arms and baby head to match. The creature follows all of Kurotsuchi's verbal commands, while also releasing a lethal 
compound of poisonous blood through its breath that can take anyone out that is not named Mayuri or Nemu. The poison can spread up to 200 meters and is constantly changing formula as to never be preemptively prepared for. Even if the opponent does not breathe this poison in, it will still enter the body through mere contact, making it almost impossible to avoid. Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo also hides beneath its massive body a row of blades that extend out from its underside, able to run and skewer anything in its way. It can simultaneously devastate the 200 meter range while expelling its poison, searching for victims to devour whole. The Bankai creature can also self-destruct if Mayuri so wishes, the act of which returning the Zanpakuto to its sealed state. In the final battle with Sternritter C. Pernida, the mystery behind Mayuri's constant modifications and experimentations with his Bankai are finally revealed. Able to summon a much larger, fully formed infant draped in a golden loincloth, inside this giant spirit's belly are unlimited modified versions of Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo that can be shaped and created based on the data that Mayuri feeds to it. This power, known as Modified Bankai, Konjiki Ashisogi Jizo Matai Fukuen Shotai, grants the user luxury to customize their final release to counter any opponent or ability they face. This is shown in practice when creating a new Bankai against Pernida that was grafted with over 70,000 layers of nerves, essentially nullifying the Sternritter's shrift. While its initial form is capable of destruction not too many Zanpakuto can compete with, the fact the Bankai can also be modified to counter most other Zanpakuto abilities or enemy attacks in general makes it a direct contender for a high up rank. Unfortunately, there are some abilities you just can't stop. <laughs> So this is going to be a bit of a long one. Zangetsu, the one, the only, the legendary Zanpakuto of the main character Kurosaki Ichigo. Let's make this quick. When Ichigo first becomes a Shinigami, his sealed Zanpakuto was similar in appearance to an oversized replica of Rukia's base Zanpakuto. This early form is very quickly shed away once Ichigo learns his Zanpakuto's name and releases it into its Shikai form. Zangetsu, having no actual release command, has some something called a constant release form due to Ichigo's uncontrollable spiritual energy. The shape it maintains is the most iconic rendition of an oversized kyber knife. Dropping the suba and with no proper hilt, the sword stands almost as tall as Ichigo himself. In this constant release form, Zangetsu is strong and able to produce powerful bursts of spiritual energy known as Getsuga Tensho, as well as be swung around like a flail using the white cloth that hangs off at the end of the blade. It's also durable enough to block strong attacks, and even deflect certain projectiles composed of Ryatsu. This Shikai state does change shape after Ichigo regains his Shinigami powers in the full bring arc, but... Zangetsu's Bankai is Tensa Zangetsu. When placing the blade in front of the user and releasing a surge of spiritual pressure, Ichigo becomes cloaked in a black robe and the Zanpakuto shrinks down to that of a black Daito, a Japanese longsword. By compressing all of his power into himself and the sword, Ichigo is able to maximize speed and power to the degree of creating after images or blocking heavy punches from Espada Zero Yami Largo. His Getsuga Tensho's attack power is significantly increased, taking on a sinister black and red color, now able to be manipulated in different ways to reach opponents, such as augmenting his sword swings or bending the Getsuga's path to reach more enemies. This Bankai goes through three different transformations. Its initial appearance, where Ichigo's robe represents how much power he has left, and as it gets ripped or discarded, it means he is slowly weakened. There is the after full bring version, which... And then there's the form Ichigo takes when reaching complete equilibrium with Zangetsu and achieving the final Getsuga Tensho. In this form, Tensa Zangetsu is fused with Ichigo's sword arm, the chain wrapped around the length up to his shoulder. What is the final Getsuga Tensho? Well, when using the final <coughs> Getsuga Tensho, Ichigo becomes Getsuga itself. Wrapped in dark bandages and surrounded with black, surging Ryatsu, rocking full black hair to match, this form's one technique is known as Mugetsu. Summoning one single blade from all of the spiritual pressure coming off of Ichigo's body, a slash of darkness to black in the sky is called forth, decimating anything in its path. This was the ability used to reduce the immortal Aizen Sosuke to a weak enough state 
state to later be sealed by Urahara Kisuke. After this Bankai is straight shafted by Jugram Hashwolf, it's revealed this Zangetsu wasn't even a real Zanpak Toe, but was simply Ichigo's hollow and Shinigami power is given physical manifestation. When Zangetsu is reforged using an actual Aosachi, Ichigo comes to terms with his Quincy heritage and is now able to wield the true Zangetsu, taking the appearance of two separate jet black blades, one the size of his previous Shikai, the other a smaller sword, about the size of Ichigo's arm that resembles a trench knife. The larger blade is meant to represent his inner hollow, while the smaller represents his ties to Yuhaba. This brand new Shikai is still a constant release type Zanpak Toe, mostly still used for melee. However, his Getsuga Tenshos have significantly grown in attack power, able to create them with just a small flick of the wrist. His larger sword, when used to create a Getsuga, summons a terrifying black crescent moon that was powerful enough to tear a hole even through the Soul Palace. The user can even fuse two Getsuga Tenshos together, becoming the new technique Getsuga Jujisho, a giant cross-shaped shockwave. The true Bankai, still named Tensa Zangetsu, combines the two blades into one large kyber knife. However, the main ability is still unknown. Its overall power level can only be inferred, as it was clearly strong enough to make a Soul King empowered Yuhaba concerned enough to break it immediately after activation. In the last battle with Yuhaba, when Tensa Zangetsu is broken the second time, the outer portion shatters to reveal something that resembles the original Shikai form we started at all the way in the beginning. Zangetsu seems to have remained in this Shikai form, resembling its original kyber knife shape, as shown in the newly released Jaws of Hell chapter. Despite this, it does appear to retain all of its massive power level from its true reforging. <laughs> The Zanpakuto of the Captain of the 3rd Division, Rojuro Otorobashi, or Rose for short. Even in its sealed form, Kinshara is shown to have some form of offensive presence. Witnessed using its power to constrict the Menos Grande with wire and become eviscerated while Rose plays his fingers on an invisible piano. Kinshara menacingly levitating in front. Released with the Shikai command, Play, the sword becomes a golden whip tipped off with a flower. The whip expands and can be used for long distance attacks that change directions at the flick of a wrist. The Shikai's main ability revolves around the end of the whip, which can be used to impale enemies, or when becoming attached to an enemy, Rose can then tap on the Zanpak Toe, releasing a reverberating vortex that echoes like a guitar strum, damaging anything within the area. Kinshara Butodan, the Zanpak Toe's Bankai, creates a giant pair of floating hands. As one hand takes hold of a conductor's rod, a myriad of golden figures wrapped in garb with petal-shaped protrusions on their faces also emerge. Known as the dancers of not being alive, as the hands conduct and direct the dancers, music is created that allows the dancers to conjure real illusions. As the music plays and captures the attention of its victim, as long as his music is real to the opponent and Rose's own words, Kinshara can deceive the opponent's heart. This means any attacks his dancers summon, despite not actually being real, will still physically harm the enemy. These dances include Sea Drift, where the dancers surround an opponent, spinning and summoning a whirlpool of surging water that overtakes them. The dancers have also been shown to make flames from their hands and scorch their target with the dance Prometheus. And I'm sure this is only the tip of the iceberg. Kinshara Butodon's illusions, while overwhelmingly destructive, are also nigh impossible to avoid while the Bankai's music is being heard by the opponent. This leaves only one route of approach, something shown off by Sternwitter, mass to masculine, went up against the Zanpak Toe. If one can disable their hearing by blowing their eardrums, they can entirely remove the music's hallucinations, allowing the opponent to negate the power at the cost of permanent disability. <laughs> The Zanpak Toe wielded by the newly crowned captain commander of the Gote 13, Shunsui Kyoraku. Katen Kyokotsu is another double bladed Zanpak Toe. Even in its sealed state, the swords are separated. One special trait of Katen Kyokotsu is the Zanpak Toe spirit's reluctance to fight with full power unless in the right mood, which unfortunately serves to handicap the user at times. Released with the command, the flowery winds become disturbed. The god of flowers sings. 
The heavenly winds become disturbed. The devil of heaven sneers. The blades are put together in the shape of a cross and flash, emerging as a pair of large black Chinese scimitars, heavily curved with silver edges. Even though the two swords are almost identical in Shikai, Kyoraku still uses them as a traditional Dai Show pair, having one used for speed strikes and the other for power. Katen Kyokotsu's Shikai ability makes children games real. By trapping the opponent in playtime, the Zanpakuto creates rules that anyone within the wielder's spiritual pressure range is forced to abide by, including the user themselves. Some of the rules that we've seen have been the game of Kageyoni, the main rule being whoever gets their shadow stepped on loses. This allows the players to manipulate their shadows, to which Kyoraku uses to hide himself in other shadows or use his own shadow to attack and create clones of himself. Iruni is a color-based game where the players call out the color of wherever they intend to slash with their sword, unable to cut anything else. The more color you yourself have on your person, the more damage you'll do to the opponent. Inversely, the less color you have, the less harm will be brought, regardless of how critical an injury is made. The possibilities are truly endless with Katen Kyokotsu, and as seen in his battle with Stark, Kyoraku can even hide the rules of the game he has started from his opponent. Shown when he begins Takayoni with the Primera Espada, a game where the one with the higher ground wins, without disclosing the game's activation at all. This is why throughout the series, Kyoraku is seen doing so many different things and seems to have multiple different abilities. Without a knowledge of the base technique, it can be very confusing to pin down its actual ability. If anything, this is a benefit. Much more straightforward in its final release, Katen Kyokotsu's Bankai, Katen Kyokotsu Karamatsu Shinju, revolves around the linear presentation of a stage play. Sinking the tip of the blades into the ground, black tendrils begin to emerge and spread out from the user as a focal point. The complete manifestation of Katen Kyokotsu's spirit appears to join Kyoraku in this final desperation move. Upon active the atmosphere becomes melancholy, and a hint of despair lines the air. The Zanpakuto's depressing aura taints the perception of all those around, forcing victims to see the dark world for what it is as the first theater act begins. Ichidanme, Tamurai Kizu, no Wakachai. Any wounds inflicted on either the wielder or the opponent are shared amongst them, making them bear each other's pain, compared to that of a man who suffers the same wounds as his lover, although not able to actually succumb to them as she does. Soon after, the second act, Nidanme, Zanki no Shitone, begins, as black spots ripple all over the opponent's body, causing deep harm, supposedly representing a continuation of the man's story, who falls ill due to the guilt of hurting his partner. Sandame, Dangyo no Fuchi, the third act. Both the user and his opponent are swallowed by a torrent of water, tying them down to the bottom until their Ryatsu presence is drowned in the Deep. Depicting the characters from the theater play, uh, deep sea diving. If for some reason the opponent hasn't met their demise, the Bankai's final act begins. Shime no Dan, Itokiri Basami, Chizome no Nodobu. After sheathing the Zanpakuto, a white thread is wound around the opponent's neck multiple times before being pulled taut, opening a wound that continually expands until it takes the head out in a flash, meant to be a last resort attack, rather than a transformation Katen Kyokotsu greatly outweighs plenty of Zanpakuto in complexity and enemy versatility. However, there are still some Zanpakuto that will just flat out ignore or negate its tactics. It's unknown if Katen Kyokotsu Karamatsu Shinju is capable of nullifying attacks that might be fast enough to incapacitate the user before the theater acts are complete, leaving it safer to speculate any Zanpakuto with abilities fast enough to remove Kyoraku from the equation would also be higher ranked. And we finally make our way into the top 10, starting off with the Zanpakuto of the original Kenpachi and the founder of the 11th Division. Fourth Squad Captain Unohana Retsu Zanpakuto, Minazuki, is quite an enigma over the course of the series, clearly presenting a powerful presence even in its sealed state, almost no dachi length in appearance. When released into Shikai with its unknown command, the Zanpakuto transforms into a large, one-eyed green manta ray, capable 
control of transportation over air, land, or sea. Minazuki's release state also has massive healing potential. The creature able to swallow wounded individuals and nurse them back to health with the strong medicines contained in its stomach acid. The sword's Bankai, cleverly also named Minazuki, dictated instead with a different kanji. Its shikai meaning, flesh drop gorge, is now turned on its head, defined now as all things end. When released into Bankai, the once regenerative properties of the stomach acid completely invert. The Zanpakuto liquefies and releases a thick, heavy crimson acid that flows over the entire area. As the dark red substance coats the entire vicinity, the liquid around the blade hardens as to be used as a melee weapon. The acid functions extremely quick, strong enough to reduce one of the most durable characters in the series, Kenpachi Zaraki, to a skeleton multiple times over. And he would have stayed that way had it not been for Unahana's healing Kido constantly reviving him. The one downside to this is that Minazuki's acid is indiscriminate and can eviscerate even the user if not careful. Although, when in Yachiru Unohana's hands, the captain's regenerative spells are able to mitigate that enough to ignore the recoil. It is unclear how this acid stacks against some nullifying techniques on this list. Although, it is assumed that through Kenpachi's perseverance and eventual defeat of Unohana, there are Zanpakuto that should be strong enough to push through and overcome Minazuki, or flat out negate its disintegration. Hyorin Maru, the strongest ice Zanpakuto in all of Soul Society, wielded by Hitsugaya Toshiro, captain of the 10th Division. Released with the command, sit upon the frozen heavens. Hyorin Maru is capable of producing mass amounts of ice with absolutely no bodies of water present. When in Shikai form, the blade extends slightly in length and creates a secondary crescent moon blade that attaches at the hilt, held on by a long metal chain that can extend for distance attacks or tangling up foes. The Zanpakuto's signature technique is its ability to create a dragon out of ice from the tip of its blade, which flies towards an opponent, freezing anything it touches. Hitsugaya can create multiple dragons at once, among other things. Also shown manifesting giant walls of ice or other shapes to trap opponents. Yorinmaru's attack power in Shikai is commendable, said to basically hold the same level of strength as its Bankai. The only thing that changes with release states is the amount of ice capable of of being conjured. The reason for this insane amount of strength is Hyorin Maru's primary ability to control the weather, more specifically, the water and the atmosphere. The full realization of this technique is unstable while in Shikai though, Toshiro himself stating he doesn't like using it for fear of accidentally harming allies in the area. While in Bankai, named Daigarin Hyorin Maru, ice flows out of the blade of the Zanpak Toe and forms a dragon's head around the user's right arm, spreading further out and creating Creating frozen wings and even a tail, it grants its user the basic ability of flight. Three large flowers of ice also take shape behind the user, and as time passes while in Bankai, these flowers will continuously melt away. Originally speculated to be a time limit that causes deactivation once the last petal has disappeared. The appearance of Daigiren Hyorinmaru entirely changes once it's holified in order to return the powers to their rightful owner during the Thousand Year Blood War, but its overall ability and strength remain similar. As mentioned previously, not many differences exist between Shikai and Hyorinmaru's Bankai, still revolving mostly around freezing entire objects or areas, but now at a much larger range of effect and speed. Even the tail of ice that was crafted onto the user is capable of flash freezing targets on impact. With greater control over the atmosphere, even if damaged, Daigarin Hyorinmaru is able to repair and regenerate itself, or uses finer control to create a living puppet in the user's likeness conjured by complete ice, lifelike enough to appear to even bleed in front of an enemy. The amount of ice released from the Bankai is so massive that giant constructs such as ice towers, daggers, or even falling snow that creates a lethal diamond dust are barely the start of the potential shown in Hyorinmaru's final release state. As once those ice petals do eventually finish wilting, Toshiro actually receives a whole ass power up. After training 
fighting mercilessly after Aizen's defeat, Hitsugaya is able to build up enough spiritual pressure to handle the true form of Daiger and Shoren Maru. In order to properly channel all this power and Raiatsu, Toshiro's body must forcefully age itself up to the point of being an adult, losing the wings and tail in favor of the more graceful looking ice shoulder guards, arm guards, and knee pads. When in completed mode, Toshiro Zanpakuto reaches similar levels of flash freezing to Sode no Shirayuki, but the level of control is much higher, shown to trap objects in ice with a mere hand gesture. Anything frozen by Hitsugaya while in this form also has all of its powers and abilities completely negated. Like Sode no Shirayuki, any physical contact whatsoever with Hitsugaya will result in instant freezing, and only needs about 4 seconds to charge up before being used for a consecutive time, surpassing Rukia's Zanpakuto that leaves her incapacitated until thawing out after use. It seems Yoramaru's one and only counter would be the intense heat from a fire-based Zanpakuto, seen to melt and be rendered useless when Ryujin Jaka releases into Bankai even from a large distance away. The power nullification has also been shown to be overridden when against an enemy that purely outclasses the user at overall strength, like Geralt Valkyrie. I imagine this is a similar condition to when Aizen overcame Suzume Bachi's two-touch rule. Nozarashi, the Zanpakuto that Kenpachi Zaraki stole from a victim and imprinted on as a young child. The blade is longer than most, almost the length of a Nodachi. Originally, the only person in the history of the Gote 13 who had achieved the rank of captain without even learning the name of their Zanpakuto. While overwhelmingly powerful even in its unreleased state, the blade was consistently oppressed by Kenpachi's disregard to learn its name and was unable to achieve full power. Zan Getsu in Ichigo's initial battle with Zaraki even notes that Nozarashi is screaming out to Kenpachi the entire fight despite falling on deaf ears. He does not gain synchronization with his Zanpakuto until after he defeats Unohana Retsu, finally being able to hear the spirit's voice. Originally thought to be a constant release Shikai like Zangetsu due to Zaraki's overwhelming spiritual pressure, this turns out to be false. When given the command drink, Nozarashi transforms into a massive hybrid between a Great Axe and a War Cleaver. In Shikai, Nozarashi's attack power is maximized and able to truly cut loose, amplifying its cutting potential to slice through opponents or even space itself effortlessly. A pure extension of the user's already insane strength. The Zanpakuto's Bankai is, ironically, currently unnamed, expunging a large wave of spiritual energy that carries enough strength to tear down buildings. The user absorbs all all of the Zanpakuto's power and gains devilish red skin and black markings on their face, looking like that of a Japanese Oni. While in Bankai, Nozarashi grants the wielder with unimaginable attack potential in exchange for their sense of self. Becoming a mindless berserker, unable to differentiate friend from foe, the strength is so terrifying Kenpachi's entire arm is almost ripped off when attempting to swing his sword. Although simple and not having much to it, the overwhelming horror that is Nozarashi is able to cut through any Zanpakuto underneath it, before any of them could even hope to damage the user. Breaking through any flash freezing and tearing through any speedy sword play or blade storms in this one and only instance, might makes right. Described by its wielder Urahara Kisuke as not a nice blade, Benahime, a Zanpakuto that although looks quite average in its sealed state during Turn Back the Pendulum, has now been shaped to have a cane looking hilt with the shaft as the sheath, the base of which has a logo stamped on the bottom of a blue fire skull, allowing the separation of soul from body when pressed against someone. With the release command, Awaken, the Zanpakuto becomes a medium sized blade with a U shaped guard holding the sword instead of a suba and a multitude of red decorations. While in Shikai, Benahime is capable of producing as well as controlling crimson energy for a myriad of different abilities. These techniques consist of Sing Benahime, which releases crimson shockwaves of strong energy from the sword swing that are comparable to an Espada Cero in power. Sing Benahime can also conjure a hexagonal barrier that has been shown to withstand multiple powerful attacks. The verbal commands are mostly different varieties of manipulation 
manipulating this crimson energy, such as Shibari Benahime, that creates a red net binding and constricting to the opponent's form, leading into a trap attack of Hiyasabi Benahime, Juzu Tsunagi, that creates orbs of fire along the outside of the net, exploding like landmines in a domino formation towards the target bound beneath the net. Benahime Shikai has also been shown to learn and adapt to Reishi attacks it witnesses, depicted when after analyzing Yami Largo's Bala attack, Urahara can trace the energy in a circle and completely cancel it out. With an all-around versatile and pretty strong Shikai, what tips Benahime over the edge of an S-ranked Zanpak Toe is Bankai. Final release, Kanan Baraki Benahime Aratame summons the great presence of a woman with dark braided hair and mannequin-looking arms draped in red robe. The user also has access to the normal sealed blade while his Bankai is activated. Benahime's Bankai has the basic ability to reconstruct anything and everything it touches. All by the user's will, one can completely disassemble whatever is within their range, an action that resembles an object being disassembled by a scalpel. Alternatively, this method can be used for passive stat boost by restructuring limbs to be stronger and more durable. It also extends to restorative purposes, seen when Urahara grafts himself a new set of eyes in his fight with Askin Naklavar. Benahime can also stitch together paths for transporting others through barriers or obstacles. Unfortunately, this control over space is limited within Benahime's area of effect, as once outside of the Bankai's range, all restructuring or changes made to an object or opponent immediately revert back to normal. This also applies when Kanan Baraki Benahime Aratame is deactivated, as evidenced by Urahara's stitches reopening and his restored eyes disappearing, which are truly the only two downsides this Zanpakuto has. The Zanpakuto of local GOAT, Aizen Sosuke, Kyoka Suigetsu, is a Zanpakuto of immaculate conception that is often seen pictured next to the definition of overpowered in the dictionary, released with the command Shatter. Upon activation, anyone that witnesses Kyoka Suigetsu's Shikai is immediately fallen victim to its main ability, Kanzen Simon, otherwise known as Complete Hypnosis. By taking control of all five of the victim's senses, the Zanpakuto is able to manipulate what a person sees, hears, feels, tastes, and smells so fluently even if a target is aware of the illusions, they're still unable to decipher what is true. This means even the strongest opponents or overpowered techniques can be conquered by this release, essentially null and voiding them or tricking them into be used in self-destructive ways. And after seeing Kyoka Sugetsu's release even just once, the victim will succumb to complete hypnosis every time a Zanpakuto is released, regardless of how long it's been since they last seen it, as the visors still fall prey to the hypnosis trap during fake Karakura Town, despite it being over a hundred years since they've been in Aizen's presence. The utility of these illusions in combat are unmatched, allowing the user to utilize enemy allies as decoys or completely waste opponent's time and energy with obstacles. These hallucinations always disperse like shattering glass when the Shikai is deactivated. Because Kyoka Suigetsu's Shikai must be seen by an opponent's eyes before it can take effect, it is incapable of working on the blind, or those who have yet to actually witness the release, even when others around are taken hold by the hypnosis. Its one and only weakness is the Zanpakuto's illusions cannot deceive any that are in contact with the actual blade of Kyoka Suigetsu itself, before complete hypnosis is activated. The Zanpakuto's Bankai has yet to be revealed, but even at just the level of a Shikai release, Kyoka Suigetsu is a sword that is to be feared by any Shinigami unlucky enough to grace its presence. Its appearance will almost always result in a loss for whoever is up against it. The ancestral Zanpakuto of noble clan Tsunayashiro, and one of the oldest Zanpakuto in existence. Despite holding immense power, its drawback is a severe detriment to the user, cursing its wielder to constantly be drained of their lifespan as long as Enra Kyoten is in use. In Can Fear Your Own World, it is used by Tokinata Tsunayashiro after his original Zanpakuto is confiscated in reprimand for his attack on his own wife. 
Since Tokinata prefers to keep the full power of Enra Kyoten a secret, he releases it with a fake name and Shikai in order to demonstrate a false moveset. Its incorrect name and command are Revere, Kuten Kyokoku, shown to produce an ability that reflects any attack brought upon the wielder in a flash of light, like a mirror. Its actual name and command being Sip from the Four Seas, the Heavenly Shores Entwine, equally duplicate ten thousands and sharpen Enra Kyoten. In true Shikai, when first released, any damage the user or the blade itself has received are instantly healed up in a flash of blinding light while the sword itself disappears. What takes its place is any Zanpakuto that the user has seen released personally, freely able to pick and choose from that selection. The power of the Zanpakuto is replicated in such a way that the copied ability strength is directly correlated to the user's own Ryatsu. As seen when Tokinata copies the healing capabilities of Hisago Maru, they are vastly superior to even the original owner Hanataro. While when Tokinata creates flame attacks mimicking the likes of Ryujin Jaka, the attack power is nowhere close to as devastating as Genrusai Yamamoto's actual Shikai. In the hands of an experienced Shinigami, Enra Kyoten is a serious advantage against most opponents. So much, in fact, the Zanpakuto's abilities easily allow for a user to solo combat multiple enemies by switching releases quickly. As the wielder swaps between strategies and powers, for context as to why this can be placed so high, Tokinata even has access to legendary Zanpakuto such as Kyoka Suigetsu, or Gagaku Kairo, although their overall effectiveness may be somewhat diminished. Its only limitations exist in the amount of Shikai the wielder is aware of, as well as the user's lifespan being constantly siphoned. Because of the overall nature of the Zanpakuto, its usefulness is entirely determined by the user's Ryatsu as well. In the hands of its initial introduced user, while versatile and capable of causing a lot of trouble, it was incapable of perfectly recreating some of the stronger Zanpakuto. Put this in the hands of someone like Aizen Sosuke, with power immeasurable when even compared to Shinigami like Yamamoto or Ichigo, a Zanpakuto like Enra Kyoten would make a monstrosity utterly unstoppable. Its only downside is its need to see Zanpakuto releases before being able to copy them, as certain techniques, as we'll get into, won't give the user a chance to live to copy the ability. The name of the Bankai of the 8th Kenpachi, Soya Azashiro, written about in Spirits Are Forever With You. Although the Zanpakuto's name itself is unknown, as well as the Shikai command or release name, the blade and its powers are ultimately referred to by its Bankai state, Uro Zakuro, as its powers and ability directly stem from the final release itself. The Zanpakuto Shikai release is comparable to almost a reversal of the Bankai's main ability, so it makes more sense to explain them backwards. Kuro Zakuro's Bankai allows its user to merge with any and all of their surroundings, gaining complete control over them in their entirety. This power to fuse with the environment extends to literally everything, including the ground and even the air itself. Because of this, with enough time, Azashiro himself was able to mold with effectively all of Seireite. This makes the user impossible to detect or sense accurately. Shouen Yorichi Shihoen attempts to locate the user Azashiro and is unable to pinpoint him to one specific location, because he's technically everywhere all at once, his presence having been spread and assimilated with most of the realm at that point. As the wielder's existence further mixes with the environment of Seireite, the Zanpakuto allows the user to perceive all events that happen within its presence. The user can hear, see, and know of anything that happens within this range. Because the user would be merged with the air, this also makes themselves invulnerable to most attacks. While inversely from an offensive aspect, the user maintains the power to ultimately eviscerate any of the things Uro Zakuro has assimilated with. This appears to the naked eye as a razor blade like effect that dices up targets all in a single glance. Azashiro uses this attack to claim the title of Kenpachi from Kenpachi Kuru Yashiki. The Zanpakuto has also been shown utilized by Azashiro specifically to take control of multiple Gigai after being fused into the conglomerate. All 
acting as individual vessels for different possibilities. Although seemingly all-powerful, the Zanpakuto does come with an insanely detrimental weakness. Uro Zakuro's composition that bases itself in its property to merge with any and all matter unfortunately restricts its user's physical body from growing in strength or ever actually being trained. This causes the wielder to be extremely frail and maintain low durability, meaning they are easily harmed if exposed. This is proven when Azashiro is critically injured by a stray spiritual blast from Don Kanonji of all people. The technique also makes the wielder incredibly vulnerable to Reishi absorption, so attacks such as a Quincy's Reishi manipulation or Holy Arrows can also be extremely dangerous to the Zanpakuto and the user. When dispelled and reverted back into Shikai, all of the Ryatsu and spiritual threads that have been woven into the surrounding area are all drawn back into the shape of a soul Osachi, taking the form of a blade that, depending on how much space was actually fused with, can be as strong as that of the Sokyoku. The overwhelming godlike manipulation that the Zanpakuto grants its user is uncomparable in power level. Able to work around even legendary Zanpakuto like Kyoka Suigetsu given the time and preparation to defend against the complete hypnosis. Although, by self-admittance, a Bankai that's insanely destructive like Kagaku Kairos is capable of defeating it in a one-on-one -on -one battle. <laughs> Speak of the Devil, Gagaku Kairo is the Zanpakuto of former 11th Division Captain and the 7th Kenpachi, Kenpachi Kuru Yashiki, known to be one of the only living type Zanpakuto, similar to Retsu Unohana's Minazuki. When released with the command, massacre the auspicious omens and come into being, respect the darkness as you become decrepit with age. The Zanpakuto transforms into a large white orb with sharp fangs about the size of a bear, able to manifest up to 13 of these terrifying beasts, they were known to be ravenous and capable of tearing down any opponents Kurashiki designates as targets. The Bankai's true name was unknown, although the final release was said to create an enormous pair of jaws that open up from the ground itself, devouring anything and everything in its reach, both living and inanimate, leaving behind absolutely nothing but the user itself. The Bankai was capable of so much destruction, it was banned by Central 46 from ever being used inside of the Seireite. The Kenpachi could have survived his final battle had he used this Bankai, but due to its indiscriminate nature, it would have consumed everyone in and around the vicinity. Gagaku Kairo's Bankai can also only be used once every six months. <laughs> Known as the oldest and most powerful fire type Zanpakuto, containing stronger offensive strength than any other sword in Soul Society, Ryujin Jaka has been rightfully wielded by the OG Captain Commander Genrusai Shigekuni Yamamoto for thousands of years. When sealed, it takes the form of a wooden staff, but this can be peeled away to reveal the true katana beneath. Released by the command, reduce all creation to ash. The activation of Ryujin Jaka. Jaka Shikai unleashes such an extreme amount of Ryatsu, it can be felt for miles across all of Seireite. The Zanpakuto becomes engulfed in fire, the mere aura of the weapon incinerating anything within range of Yamamoto's blade swings. The heat of these flames are enough to scorch the sky and the clouds themselves, creating blazing storms of fire that ruin the surrounding area. The Shikai of Ryujin Jaka also has specific names for certain techniques, such as Jokaku Enjo, which was responsible for restraining Sosuke Aizen, Yin Ichimaru, and Kaname Tosin behind an immense wall of flames during the beginning portion of the war over fake Karakura Town. Another notable ability is Anetsu Jigoku, that creates seven or more pillars of fire that encircle the perimeter, signaling the end of everything within this caged inferno, including potentially Yamamoto himself if he deems it necessary. Even in Shikai, the sword's attack power is enough to 
reduce any opposing force to ash with little to no effort. Its destructive strength unmatched by any. Ryujin Jaka's Bankai, Zanka no Tachi, causes the blade itself to swallow whole any and all flames once generated by the Zanpakuto Shikai in a moment's pass. This incorporates every ounce of heat and power into the blade itself, allowing the sword to slice anything it touches clean out of existence. Concentrating all of this attack power solely at the tip of the sword, it was witnessed to cleave open a gigantic gulf in Seireite with just a mere tap of the floor. Simultaneously, while all of its offensive strength is contained within the Zanpakuto, Yamamoto's spiritual pressure fluctuates at a violent rate with an obscene temperature outside of his own body. Although the massive, unrealistic temperature Yamamoto keeps his flames at makes the heat invisible, if he so wishes, the Captain Commander can make the coat of fire armor he's donned invisible to achieve full despair. While in Bankai, Yamamoto compares his power to that of the sun, radiating heat that supposedly reaches a temperature of 15 million degrees. The terrifying sword that wields all of this power is known as Zanka no Tachi's East, Kyoku Jitsujin, while the impenetrable defense of flames that surge outside of the user's body are known as Zanka no Tachi's West, Zanjitsu Gokui. While capable of obliterating all of Seireite if he leaves the Bankai activated for too long. Even the initial activation of Ryujin Jaka's final release is enough to deplete all moisture in an area the size of Seireite, not even allowing the strongest ice-type Zanpakuto Hyorinmaru's Bankai to exist even in the same realm as such firepower. This doesn't even begin to scrape the surface of the demise Zanka no Tachi summons, calling upon the direction of South. Kakajuma no Kushi Daisoujin. Yamamoto impales his blade into the dirt below, stirring forth the skeletons and ashes of all formerly defeated enemies the user has ever slain. Tearing themselves from their graves below, Yamamoto heats up their ashes and manipulates them as an army of zombies that will bring down any enemy. The user can shape these skeletons to resemble any specific fallen warrior they wish in order to inflict the maximum amount of psychological damage. The finale of this showcase is Zanka no Tachi North, Tenshi Ka a slash of concentrated phoenix fire and heat that incinerates whatever it cleaves from the realm. Ryujin Jaka's Bankai is a sight only one is able to tell the tale of. It's for this reason and this reason alone. It completely demolishes any ranking below it without a question based on sheer destructive strength alone. Its literal one and only witnessed weakness was Wonderweiss Margella, an Arankar specifically bred to extinguish Ryujin Jaka's flames, which was only even able to exist due to Aizen's tinkering with reality and existence itself thanks to the Hogyoku. <laughs> Possibly one of, if not the, first Zanpakuto to ever grace existence. Ichimonji, wielded by Royal Guard member Ichibe Hyosube, in its sealed form takes the shape of a large calligraphy brush, its user being an accomplished calligrapher responsible for the names of almost everything in Soul Society. Ichimonji allows the user to bring this power into reality. By drawing kanji characters in the air, Ichimonji creates powers relating to the meaning carried in the calligraphy. Examples of this would be when Ichibe signs the seal for Conceal, which is able to hide large objects, even the entirety of the Soul King's palace from view. Or the sign for Seal, which creates a barrier that cannot be crossed, even in a sealed state. When being cut by Ichimonji, a victim, instead of being physically harmed, has whatever was sliced decreased in power, its name severed. For example, meaning if Ichimonji strikes an opponent's arm, that arm loses attack power because the limb's name arm was cut down and reduced to R instead. Only two thirds of its original self remaining. Released with the command Blacken, the Zanpakuto transforms into a brush shape to that of a shorter glaive, the top portion of which has a small single edged blade that resembles the tip of a chokuto. A halo of black ink is created behind Ichibe. As Ichimonji is swung around in Shikai form. Black ink is released into the area. Anything coated in this ink loses its name, and therefore all of its power. Ichimonji's main ability is its control over black. Upon release, 
all of the color black, whether the things themselves be animate or inanimate, are subjugated to his will. Even if all of this power is somehow reflected back at him, it cannot bring any harm to the user. Ichimonji wields the power of all black in the entire universe. So even if stolen, it will eventually be restored to Ichibei. Because Ichimonji was the very first Zanpop Toe to ever evolve into a second release state, Ichibei does not refer to this power as Bankai, despite it being essentially the same thing in spirit. Activated by the command Shinuchi, the blade of Ichimonji's brush becomes pale white, creating a long, thick thread that coils up in the air above the user. Known by the name Shirafude Ichimonji, when in this state, Ichibei is able to give a new name or change the existing name of any who have been touched by Ichimonji's ink. Through renaming, Ichimonji gives the victim all the properties or abilities of the newly gifted title. By writing the kanji for something such as horsefly on an opponent, the victim would become as frail and defenseless as the insect. Ichimonji's final attack, Futen Taisatsuro, summons a massive blanket of darkness from the surrounding area, which the user then fills up a cup with, before drinking that very blackness directly. After a short incantation, a gigantic mausoleum sitting atop shattered graves emerges from the dark. This technique assimilates any and all black from their opponent, stealing every ounce of darkness from them, including their flesh, blood, and bones, until literally nothing whatsoever remains of their existence. A demise so absolute, reincarnation should not even be possible. While not so much the strongest Zanpakuto by offensive means, with the ability to subjugate existence itself, or just change any physical or metaphysical property at the swipe of a hand, I really don't see any other Zanpakuto contending with this one. Ichimonji, defies the laws of physics, and if its one and only opponent wasn't the almighty, perhaps it would have made a much larger impression. Nevertheless, able to change the name of any Zanpakuto on this list to Dog Turd, and control the literal embodiment of black itself. There is not a single Shikai or Bankai on this list that stands a lick of a chance against the strongest Zanpakuto in Bleach, Ichibei Hyosubei's Ichimonji. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of this insanely long video. I sincerely appreciate you. Please leave a like on the video for all the hard work I did, and consider hitting the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of the other content I make on this channel as well. I'm sure you have a certain disagreement, or another Zanpakuto on this list is your favorite and you feel I miss a reason why it should have been ranked higher. Definitely hit me down in the comments and we can duke it out in the marketplace of ideas. Either way, you're an awesome person for making it this far. Thank you so much to my beautiful, beautiful best grade members. Consider becoming one by hitting the join button below. This is your second reminder to leave a like and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace.